Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Burr. Welcome. Today, I'd like to get into Anjin. And we see it mostly in um, the form push in a Taiji form. But there's a specific Jin that is related to that. And just to re refresh your memory about Jin, Jin is a, it's a combination of Li, which is muscular force, and Qi, which is energy, and being able to find the appropriate amount of, of Qi or Li in any situation is part of the, the art of, of Taiji Chuan, it's that learning part of your Kung Fu is learning what is the appropriate ratio of Qi and Li in any situation. And you know, the higher we go on the on the Gong Fu scale, we the more Qi and less Li is, is involved. But we need to go through the muscular part in order to get to the other part. You can't just kind of imagine throwing people across the room with your mind and make it happen. Uh, at least I haven't seen that yet. It's not something that's in my particular uh, experience. But I do know that if you start very with a very substantial muscle-based approach and gradually increase your intention and gradually increase your ability to release and, and use your energy more, then you move in that direction. You move in the direction of that effortless competence. Let me just adjust this camera here a little bit. Yeah, okay. So um, came across a term which uh, which I like. It. It's sort of a way of uh, uh, combine a, a Chinese expression which combines two things which I consider to be elemental to to what we're doing here. And and one is Sung, which is releasing into the intrinsic support of your connective tissue. So you're trusting the tendons and ligaments and fascia. And by doing that, you're able to let go of muscular tension. So that's Sung. Then the other term is Fong, which is F-A-N-G, which it can be thought of as reaching or extending. You can also think of it as stretching. And so with Fong, what we're doing is we're lengthening the connective tissue. So in, in thinking of it in strictly in structural terms here. So the on the insubstantial level, Fong is extending your mind, extending your intention out. So, but in a... Uh, when we're thinking of it in uh, on more substantial level, we're saying, oh, the reaching lengthens the connective tissue. So put those two together, you have feng song, feng song, and, and, and what that means is that put them together, you're combining tensegrity with the releasing into the support of your connective tissue. And it doesn't really change anything about what we're doing, but it's just kind of one of those nice little tie-ins with the traditional literature that, uh, uh, I don't know, adds a certain authenticity to, to the whole process. We're not just making all this stuff up. It's actually been around and it's actually part of the, part of the canon, just you don't necessarily run across it uh, real easily. You have to you gotta kind of look under the uh, under the rocks to be able to find these these uh, little little tidbits. So if we to get that get that feng song, you you want to be able to release and extend and be able to reach you know and then when that does is it ties everything together. It creates a state of wholeness throughout the whole system. So and we're going to be going into Anjin. And we're going to feel into that when we're, we're playing with the Anjin, because it's a 
one of the more complex jins we played. So we so far we've covered a few of them. We we talked about Pong Jin, which is kind of an up and out, expansive kind of energy. Then we have Lu Jin, which is a kind of more of a down and in kind of receptive kind of energy. And then we have Qi Jin, which is you know press energy, and that's you know where they're we're extending out in a very young way with the arms but we're simultaneously going very yin with the with the uh, with the legs with the with the with the foundation so we're sinking in getting that very yin to produce the the counterbalance to the yang expression of the arms so now we're going to anjin and with that, we get Pong Lu Ji An as like the uh, the the four cornerstones of Tai Chi Chuan. And then we get into other other energies beyond that. But those are like the the primary ones. Those are like the cardinal points of the of the compass. So Pong Lu Ji An An is a little more complex in that it is. We think of it. We use the term push to uh, to talk about you know uh in, in the uh, the way we translate the uh into our, our forms we say oh you know we have you know ward off roll back press and push and with that comes a certain idea of um which i believe is counterproductive to actually experiencing the gin aspect because this is a real primal kind of kind of thing. It's something that that you know every kid does in the schoolyard. Yeah, yeah, get out of here. You know, and uh, there's a, a shoving away, and that is different than what we're trying to do with these gins. Because first of all, you know, the the shove usually is accompanied by a pushing away also from the earth. So we're disconnecting the root and we're kind of getting down. So we're going dialing the Lee, the muscular force, you know, back to like, you know, maximum and turning the Chi way down to minimum. And so the, the amount of gin, it's a really crude gin that we're talking about there. But if we, we change it, so we're going to take this, this on apart so that we can see the, the various components of it. So it's actually more of a compressing down and then out. So there's, you can think of it in a kind of a circular pattern where you're kind of going like this, you're down, pressing down and then uh, reaching out. So that's the, that's the pattern of the energy. But prior to that, and it's a, it's a real important point here I wanna, I wanna comment on, and that is when we're applying these chins, there is a quality of reaching rather than pushing away. So the way we connect up and actually establish the shift out of the muscle-based format, which that push away is kind of a, a fear-based kind of thing, whereas we're actually reaching out to connect. So the difference between a push and a reach, you know, is that desire to connect to something, you know, I reach out and touch my wrist. Okay, there's a desire to connect there. If I'm pushing my wrist, there's, there's a desire to disconnect. So in when we're going into Anjin, there's there is you're making contact and keeping that contact. You're sticking and adhering. You've reached out, you've you've established contact with the whatever it is you're you're doing. Let's say, let's say we're talking in a push hands context where you're reaching out, touching your partner, and you're making contact and you're drawing in and down and then up and out so that circle goes like that but it's there is a 
a continuous kind of stickiness that's going on with your hands. So that's what's happening up, up top. That's what's happening in your and you know your shoulders, your arms, your hands. Down below, we are getting very sung in the qua. So we're uh, sinking down because to be able to direct this energy in and down, we have to drop our energy. So you can't push away from the earth and, and get that same effect. It, you, you've disconnected from your source of yin chi, which is the earth. So we want to develop it. So I, I told you it's a kind of complex uh, jin, but understanding it actually improves your understanding of everything else. So it's well worth the time put into actually learning about it and then practicing it. Because in whenever you can do that, then you are moving the gin, the gin ratio way more to the chi side. And you're then able to translate that into the other other energies. So um, any questions so far? We're good. Everybody, everybody good? Okay, good. So let's, uh, let's, uh, we'll start by just working on the, the, the foundation because it all kind of starts with the foundation. And we'll, uh, we'll work with that. And then we'll, we'll work into the what's going on with the with the arms and the hands. Okay, so why don't you stand up and we'll uh, take a look at that. Step out. First, we're going to get the three pillars. We're going to set that, and get our energetic connections. So feel the balls of your feet and soften your knees, allow them to settle in over the balls of the feet. You're feeling that pressing down into that, into that. You're feeling that really stable connection to the balls of the feet, allowing the bubbling wells to open up. Allows that yin chi to bubble up from the earth and into your body. And reach for the crown of your head and tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. <laughs> Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum and your coccyx to drop. When you do that, notice that there's a tendency to want, then want to shift back into your heels. So then just make the adjustment back to the balls of your feet so that you're sinking, dropping your Wei Lu at the base, at the, at the coccyx, allowing that to drop without rocking back, without leaning backward. Reach again with the crown of your head, tuck in the chin, open the jade pillow gate, reestablish that. So we're having, right now we're experiencing central equilibrium or Zhong Ding. Now push away slightly from the earth, use your muscles to kind of lift up your body a little bit and creating more distance between you and your body and the earth. And then release that and settle down in. So by doing that, we've created Sun Kwa. We've allowed the hip joints, the Kwa, to relax 
release allow us to settle into the support of our legs. So we're using the lee, the muscle power of the legs to be our support, our foundation. But it's a yin power. That is, we're allowing ourselves to settle into it. When we push away, that's a yang power. This is a yin power. It's, a, it's a releasing down. You reach with your elbows, opening the shoulder joints. Point with your index fingers and feel your energetic connect, uh, coherence. Let's play for a moment with Fong and Sung. Uh, push away from the earth a little bit. This is Fong. You're stretching, you're lengthening, and then release and go into Sung. Now, reach with your wrists, reach with your elbows. Let your arms come up. The chest height. Reach with the fingers. And now we have Fong. We're reaching, we're opening, extending. Feel the space between your shoulder blades opening up, lengthening around your arms here so that your palms are facing your chest, reaching with your elbows, opening the shoulder joints. And push away from the earth, open, and it feels up pushing, expanding, very young, and then Ah, uh, sink, sung. Feel those two different kinds of power. The yang expansive power, the yin supportive power. Rotate the palms. Push away from the earth, reaching, opening, and sink, and bring your hands down. Feel your the support, feel that connective tissue, that connection, feel the energy that's coursing through your body. You feel it particularly in the hands. Push away, expand, and release. So, uh, arm reach with the wrists, reach with the elbows. Reach with the fingers. Reach out, extend, open. Feel the, the space between your shoulder blades. This time I want you to expand, open, reach, and then uh, sink. And as you do that, bring your hands back and feel them pressing down like you have this big globe you're pushing down on. Bring your hands up, reaching forward, extending, still sinking into your legs. <laughs> Push 
push away, reach, open. Sink, press down, reaching down with your elbows, feeling the hands following the elbows, reaching down, feeling them pushing down on that without muscular tension. Just feel the weight of the hands pressing down and then reach forward. away, come up, extend, expand, and sink. Feel the heaviness. Feel the density of your arms and hands. And reach out. down, feel the resistance of the air as you move through it. Feel that energetic connection. Feel the chi. Give it on your left heel. To the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, push away and sink <coughs> into your left leg. Sung. Pick up your right heel and step forward with your right foot. To the ball of the right foot, push your right knee forward, push away, get, come up. And So just as a reminder, we're doing this push away and sink in an exaggerated fashion, just so we really get a good uh, sense of the feeling of Sung and the contrast between the Yang expansion and the Yin support. So. Now you're going to feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and push away with the left leg, coming up. So you're expanding and then sitting down into your left leg. So we've shifted from the right leg being substantial to the left leg. We've gone from 70% in the right to 70% in the left. Feel the ball of the right foot. Push your right knee forward without transferring your weight there. And then push away. So you're coming up and releasing down into the front leg. Left ball, set the left knee, push away, rise, expand, and then sink. Right ball, push your right knee forward, push away, coming up and release down your sung. Push away. I could feel the left ball, set the left knee, push away with your left and then sink into your left claw. Now step back with your right foot. Turn your right foot out on a 45, feel the ball, set the knee, push away, and sink into the right quad, pick up your left heel, and step forward with your left foot. Feel the ball of the left foot, put your left knee out, set that, and then push away, and sink into your left quad. So, feel the stability of that. You wanna feel the load in your 
the medial part of your thigh. And notice how the knee is lined up so that my butt's not pushing out to the side at all. You want to have that uh, centered. So you're feeling that connection with the ball of your foot. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, push away and feel yourself rising. Feel that yang and then sink into the left, the right quad. Left ball, push your left knee forward, sink, push away and sink into your left quad. Right ball, set the right knee, push away. Sink. Left ball, push your left knee forward, push away and sink. You reach with your wrists, with your elbows, reach with your fingers. Fong. This is that extension. You're reaching out as if to touch something. You know, that expansion between your shoulder blades, that lengthening, stretching of the connective tissue ties the whole system together and permits the chi to move freely throughout. As you get more and more refined in your body awareness and energy awareness, you can do less and less. But right now we're, we're doing things very expansive just so we get that real clear feeling of it. Now feel the ball of the right foot, push away and sink. And as you sink, draw, reach down with your elbows and feel yourself pushing down on that big globe as you sink into your right quad. Hands are coming down, they're pressing down. But it's not, you're not using the tension in your muscle, uh, your shoulder muscles to make that happen. You're allowing the whole body connection to make that happen. Now feel the ball of the left foot, push your left knee forward, push away, and sink into your left and reach out your hands. Right ball, set the right knee, push away, reach with the elbows. And sink, sung into that right ball, pressing down with your hands. Feel the it's not just your hands, it's the whole arm. Everything is, and the arms are connected to everything else. You're feeling not just the weight of your arms, but the weight of the earth is pressing down. It's compressing. And this, from a, if you're using this as a, uh, as a self-defense kind of thing, you're, you're using it to push down so as to create a counter reaction in your partner and which they will push away to escape the counter dot. And then we do the next part, which is feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, push away and sink. And we help them along. So this becomes a big wave. We're going, oh, the wave is coming in and down and oh, forward and out and whoosh. So it becomes, it's a very watery energy. It's like this ocean wave, very powerful ocean wave coming up and doing that. But we want to really attune ourselves to the feeling of it rather than just mimicking the external movements. Bring, step in, bring your hands down and step forward with your right foot. Okay, feel the ball of the right foot, push your right knee forward, set that. Push away and sink. We're getting this sung. Arms reach up, reach out, fong. Sung and fong together. Hands 
Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, push away. And sink. Feel the heaviness of the arms being connected with the whole body. Since the whole body is sinking, the arms are translating that into whatever they're touching. To the ball, the right foot, push your right knee forward, push away and sink and reach out. Left ball, set the left knee, push away. Reach with the elbows, reach with the wrists. Sink. Pressing down. Right ball, push your right knee forward, sink into your right claw. Actually, you know, push away with your right leg and then sink with the into the right claw and reach. As you get, in fact, let's do it right now. As we get more familiar with this, we can dispense with the push away part and just go to the song. Once we get that feeling of that, so let's just do that right now. We're gonna feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and Ah, immediately go to Sung in the left claw and feel the arms pressing down. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, immediately go to the Sung in the left, the right claw and Fong in the arms, reaching and extending, opening. Left ball, set the left knee and sink. Sung qua, left claw. Right ball, set the right knee, sink and reach. Left ball, set the left knee, sink, pressing down. Feel your elbows, your shoulders are relaxed. Reaching with the elbows permits the shoulders to, to let go. You're unkinking the hose in the shoulders. Right ball, set the right knee and reach. down, step back with the right foot, step in, just stand there in that neutral posture for a minute and just feel the energy, all that sung and fong produces a whole lot of chi flow. As I said before, we can then translate this into other, other movements, other forms, once we really grasp that. Here it's a very big and obvious kind of choice. Take a deep breath. Disappear the chi. Feel into the emptiness. Let everything go. Where it's just now. Take a seat, please. Rick. The lightning bolts are back. <laughs> Man, I thought I had them pretty much controlled for a while, but this time from the very outset, fingers through, through the whole form, through the whole, my whole body. 
Beautiful. Very impressive. Beautiful, beautiful. Peter. Yeah, thank you. You know, I was a little beat by the heat today, so I audited and I sat down, but I, with my arms and torso, I participated in some of the movements. And it was, it was very wonderful and fascinating. One of the things that lit up for me is the, uh, when you explained that the, um, the on, the movement with on Jin, you know, down and in and then out and up uh, corresponds to playing with a partner. You're drawing the, drawing the partner down and then they react by pulling back and then you help them along. Uh, that struck a chord. Well, it lit up to mix a metaphor and it struck a chord um, because it reminded me of, um, you know, there's a in intriguing philosophical notion, the respiration of being, that being itself is, is breathing, you know, coming in, in and out. And uh, that gave me the, uh, made me wonder if in, you know, more generally in Tai Chi, when you're playing with a partner, a human partner, in a way it may be a rehearsal and a preparation to play with being itself and to connect and integrate with, you know, I, I don't know how the Tao, Taoism would ex, you know, explain it, but, but the, the human partner is kind of like a training partner for the, um, the, big, the big partner. Uh, that, that's an intriguing idea there, Peter. That uh, I think you're you're onto something. I don't think it's um, well. I think it's it's happening in every moment. That 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 dance of of being and non-being is occurring at every moment, and uh, we there's a constant pulsing between being and non-being. And when we when we do that. Uh, we don't have to wait. It's not a preparation for it. it's. It's just allowing us to see, to tune into that that quality of of energy that uh, that exists in every moment. So uh, yes, I think uh, I think you're onto something there, Richard. Uh, right at the beginning, I found that being reminded of the circularity um, of uh, the circularity of movement and of energy uh, really ramped up the my uh, feeling of energy and it, and it very much ramped up the yin the yin part it sort of captured me on the way down and bounced a little bit back up and I think that I've sort of forgotten about the circular nature of what we do. Um, mm. You know, often I forget about the spiral nature, but uh, uh, this was this was very this was very interesting to be doing what we've been doing, but then remember that there's circularity involved. It seemed to uh, really empower my feelings. Um, very nice, very nice. That's great. Scott. I have to say of all the things that I've ever learned, I think this is the strongest feeling I've ever had of just scratching the surface. <laughs> so, I feel like I got, I feel like I got maybe 1% of this, but I mean, I, but the amount of energy and, and you know, it, the amount of feeling that I got out of it was huge, but I think there's just so much more here to learn. I, I, I agree. It's, uh, it's one of those things that's, that's going to be a teacher for a long time. And it took this long to come to this. You know, right. it's, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, it, it doesn't just jump out at you, you know, the first time you do a Taiji form. You have to uh, get to a certain level to be able to even appreciate what we're talking about here. As you, you, <laughs> you have to have done a lot of work just to be able to make these subtle distinctions that we're talking about. And, uh, but on the other side is the promise that, oh, we are just scratching the surface. 
And this, this goes on. So you can start to see like this, you know, that, that quality that you see at the very highest levels where just a mere touch, you know, completely you know, it transforms the energy of a situation. And attuning to it, breaking it down like this so that we can actually see what the nuts and bolts are that, uh, that tie it together, it's, it's, it's kind of cool. And, and it gives us a template for, for getting that other 99% that is yet to come. Uh, I was going to say when you actually from I mean from the very first beginning when I actually started studying with you 23 years ago whenever it was 26 years ago um, you would actually you would always taught to push the physical move this physical movement of you know coming down and in but right. I wasn't prepared for the energetic part <laughs> <laughs> Valerie um, I don't know if I can put this succinctly into words. Um, it was very profound in when, okay, pushed away and then releasing down. So that was reaching down into the ground and the amount of earth energy then coming up accentuated the reaching up with the crown and the heaven energy then coming down and this thing going on inside of my body while we're doing that. I mean, I kind of, I was just focusing on the energy. I wasn't really focusing so much on the physical other than trying to, okay, I open my eyes to see what we're doing, but the amount of energy, it was, um, pretty dang cool i had you know those lightsabers that they sell the kids that light up and they're blue or purple i had that i had that <laughs> I could see the colors. it was all lit up but it, it was made brighter by the reaching down with you know whatever foot we were moving into and allowing that earth energy to come up it just made this so much stronger it was, that was uh, quite remarkable, quite remarkable. I, I liked it a lot. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much. That, uh, that uh, eloquently, uh, eloquently <laughs> stated. So that was, that was you, you paint a very nice picture there. Thank you. Peter. Yeah, well, Valerie, may the force stay with you. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, two things. Uh, the... Uh, you know, understanding the practice, practice as uh, sung, sung fang really resonates for me. It really, you know, and I, it kind of, it, it, it captures the nicest moments when I practice reaching up with the crown because mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's that sung quality that is the, that is the basis or the context for, for, the the graceful the graceful reaching the gentle reaching so it's nice to have that vocabulary the other thing is i've been working with the um you know the basic exercises in chapter eight to um direct experience of the chi mm -hmm. and i really like those and i shared them with some friends today uh this afternoon and it was a hit several people said they really felt you know some meaningful connection so I, I just appreciate that. Good, thank you for sharing that. Appreciate that. That's great. Cool. Um, anything else? Anybody else? Richard. I, I was just, I've been wondering if you um, were able to find, uh, to find any one to, talk with about your work while you were in Florida? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. So yes, I found, uh, I found a couple of people who were receptive, but right. uh, mostly, mostly we were, you know, it was, it was, we were working, we were doing a lot of, uh, you know, refing and uh, judging and things like that. It was a very full day. So I didn't get a chance to 
to do a, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of that, but uh, I did a couple of people. So yes, and, and are there? Um, do you know if there are any uh, videos put up that we could see from the from the? Yeah, yeah I, uh, I I did a demonstration of. That's Wudong what I want to see. Yeah, yeah, Wudong Mountain Tai E Wuxing Chuan that went over really well, and uh, I think I posted that today. It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. I'll post it on YouTube tomorrow. Okay, Maria's going to post it on Facebook tomorrow, but it's on, it's on YouTube right now. Okay. And then also, um, unrelated but somewhat tangential is uh, I did an interview today, which will also be posted for a British health program and uh, did an hour long interview uh, talking about a lot of this stuff uh, on, on the, uh, on that program. Now I'll, I'll get that posted on the, uh, um, on YouTube also and on Facebook. So, well, yeah, that's great. Peter. Yeah, I have a, I think I have a lot to say. I'm, I'm curious, you know, follow up question to Richards. You know, my sense is Rick that you are, you know, you're well grounded, obviously, in tradition, but you're also something of an innovator. And I'm wondering if, um, if that aspect of your teaching and your, your practice is being re received, appreciated in the traditional, the traditional world. Is it or by anyone, you know, I, I think you should have like thousands of students. You've got like <laughs> four people in this class. I've thought about that. I know a couple of teachers who should have thousands of students in their classes and they have like half a dozen or 12. And I think it's because they're, they're in between because most people don't quite think for themselves. They, they follow, you know, the big, theater of tradition with costumes and rituals and uh, an authority, or they follow people who are, you know, hyper intellectual, sophisticated, learned discourse. But, but the better thing is people who are coming from deep experience and clear presentation. But, but a lot of people just, you know, it, it's, it doesn't compute perhaps for many people. So I'm wondering if in the traditional world- I've been teaching for over 30 years, Peter. I haven't figured it out yet. So I just, I just you know, whoever shows up, that's, that's my people, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's, <laughs> I, I stop worrying about the people who aren't here, you know? And uh, it's uh, whatever they, uh, you know, if people, uh, but in answer to your question, I have gotten a lot of really positive feedback from all over the world, I get emails, you know, people saying how much they appreciate the books and things like that. So I, uh, I do appreciate any, any response, any encouragement. And, you know, mostly what I get, you know, is what I can do. You know, if, if people see that and say, oh, that's cool. Right. I want to do that. I want to feel right. that. I want to, I want to, I want to have that. That's what's more important to me more so than even the way I talk about these things, which is super important too, because they're the, the words are the maps that allow us to go to that place. But what's really important is, can you do it? Can you do it? And then can you teach it? Because there's a lot of people out there who can do stuff, cool stuff, but they can't pass it on to anyone else. So my, my goal is to actually be able to communicate it in such a way that that people get the joke and they can do it. Rick. Yeah, it's Peter, there's, there's a reason that Taekwondo is America's most popular martial art. <laughs> and um, basically just from my own experience, I have spent 40 years uh, and I've met at least a thousand teachers. And at the present time, there are less than six that I think has been effective for me, but I'm not looking to be badass or tough. I'm looking to be smart and effective. And I found that over the years, the teacher does what, rather than teaching the student, 
what they should know, they teach them what they want to know so they can keep making a living. Yeah. As I always talk to people, somebody in New York once asked me what's the best style. And my reply was they're all the same. The human body, the human mind, the, uh, the human body, the human mind and the world around them. The rest is money and ego. Mm. Yeah, and well, so that's a You have to find your audience for what you're teaching. And that's true of any art, whether it's movies, television, martial arts, cuisine, you need to find the people who want smart and effective rather than badass and tough. Yeah. Well, I, I concur very much with what you said. There are people out there who can do a lot of stuff, but you know, if they can't impart that and really share that, explain that, to folks, it, it it doesn't do, I mean, unto themselves, that's fine. But if you're trying to be, you're trying to teach it and you can't raise the level um, of your students, it's like, there's, there's, a, there's something missing, something's kinked in the hose, right? Uh, and I had a teacher tell me a while ago that <laughs> the better you are, the fewer students you'll have. <laughs> oh, interesting. It made that, sense to me. It made sense to me. Valerie, I'm I'm always my um, my um, my measure my measure of a teacher is what can their students do, and uh, I don't expect the students of these of highly skilled people to be able to do what they do. But it's nice to see when some of their students can do some of what they can do. You know, so often you see very skilled teachers whose students don't really have it. They don't have anything. So transferring this knowledge is uh, really, really difficult. And uh, you know, I think I think that you know Rick Rick is doing a marvelous job of that. I'm sorry that we don't all have more hands-on time together to see if we really are learning some of this. But, see, these well, are the times we live in. <laughs> and, and also I look, I look for students who don't necessarily are able to do what the teacher does, but at least they try. They're trying to do it. It's, it's an, it doesn't matter to me whether they accomplish it because Rick does Rick with a K-Fu. I do Rick without a K-Fu. And everybody has to find their own foo. And, and to paraphrase Bruce Lee, <laughs> make it your own. Make it your own. Well, I appreciate all of you. Thank you for being here and giving me an opportunity to share this cool stuff. Because otherwise, this would be rattling around in my brain and, and that just drive me nuts. So uh, <laughs> this way. <laughs> This way I get to share it and it has a place and it makes space. Whenever I dump it out, it makes space for new cool stuff to come in. So uh, <laughs> that's fun. And back One, to your point, Peter, that is, you know, grounded in tradition, we're seeing this Fong and Sung again, right? We're seeing the grounded in tradition, which is the Sung part and expanding, reaching outward to connect with the unknown. That's the Fong part. And so we have this, you know, there's that that dance of circularity that goes on there also. So yeah. it's something that uh, it's an ongoing process. And thank you for being my dance partners. I appreciate it. Appreciate hey, you. Yeah. And if you got something more from that brain of yours, there's one brain here, no waiting. <laughs> plenty of plenty of space. That's right. Oh, loads and loads of space. There's a whole universe in here. Well, I'll, I'll, I depend on that. So <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say that Nick and Lynn did um, ask us to tell you that, you know, they've been traveling. Um, not, they're not not coming back. Uh, they might they just left today and they might meander home taking their time. So I'm not sure if they'll make even next week's class, but they're hoping to. So it's summertime and I, you know, uh, I, 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 I have surrendered to that the vagaries of summer and uh so people show up they don't show up you know it's uh i i i'm here for you and uh if if there's somebody out there then 
we're having a class, you know, and that's that's how it works. And, and you these, know, are, these are preserved on YouTube for people who do want to check in and, you know, see what's see what's going on. And you so, know what I always say, more for me. <laughs> you do say that a lot. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, love you all. <laughs> Thank, you, Maria. Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thanks, thank, Maria. Thank, 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 you thank, thank you for holding. Thank you for supporting us and holding the fort while Rick was gone. Uh, Sunday was beautiful. So. Yes, it was very nice. It was very nice. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm Great. glad you're home safe, Rick. Thanks. Bye-bye. See you, see you soon.